Pike and Seeker. Today I'm going to talk to you about my trekking poles. And they are a Compadel aluminium composite pole. You can get the, the hardened rubber handle on some of the cheaper poles and you can also get a cork handle which the cork handle obviously is better for wicking away sweat I would say but these foam handles the ones I've got they uh, they do the trick for me all the trekking poles have these baskets at the bottom I've only got small ones on I'm usually in reasonably hard ground you can get really big baskets for snow but obviously <laughs> Here in Western Australia, I'm not going to get any snow. So yeah, that's the baskets. Now, adjusting the trekking poles. You don't want to be pulling one to its maximum out and then adjusting the other one. You want to try and adjust them evenly. Now when you've been using them for a while, you know what that length is. I know that mine is 125 on, on the top there and it's 125 on the bottom and I know that's the correct height for me and that height there gives me a 90 degree angle with my shoulder and my fore my shoulder coming down there and my forearm and that's the correct angle for the poles 90 degrees now the other thing is the strap on the pole when you use the strap you come up from underneath and you put your thumb around that side of the pole so if anything happens when you trip or stumble the pole falls away from, falls away from your hand you can also come up through the strap underneath and put your hand hand and thumb around the other side. Some people choose to do that and take all the weight on your wrist like that. But the one thing you don't want to do is to come down through the top strap. Because then when, you, when you're holding onto the pole, if something happens, the pole stays with your hand. And you can then get a situation here where your thumb can get caught on the strap when you go down and people have it's documented that people have dislocated or even broken their thumb and you don't want that so you never ever come down through the top like that you always come up from underneath when your hands in the strap like that you're not you're not having a death grip on your pole all the, all the weight is going down on the strap. You're really just lightly guiding the pole almost. So at the end of the day, you know, your hand's not tied because you're gripping the pole. Obviously the only time you're gonna have to grip the pole is if you're going downhill or uphill and, and you can't use your strap, then you're gonna have to grip the pole. But on normal terrain, on reasonable gradients, you can use that strap. As I say, then you've got the weight on the strap and you're more or less just guiding the pole. And then you're not, you know, your hand's not sweating as much because you're not grasping that pole. Now, apart, apart from those obvious, like I've just showed you, because obviously that's when you've got a, a heavy pack on your back. Uh, generally, on day hikes, I don't tend to use the poles at all. I think you know when I've only got a light pack on I'm trying to strengthen my knees you know ankles hips and back trying to give them a, a bit of a workout when I've only got a light pack on so I don't use the poles I may use one for a walking stick but there's another way to look at that of course and you could say that the sooner you start to use the poles for everything the sooner you start to you know help help your joints that's, that's another way to look at it now what other things can these obviously they, they they can be used for balance you can use use them to 
to probe in front of you. So you on the on you might be on a, a flood you might be on a flooded track. So you're going to probe in front of you to see how deep the water are, or it might be mud. One of the trekking poles here. I've got some duct tape on. And because I do filming on my own, I have a stick pick to go on one of my trekking poles. So that can be used out there. Obviously the camera mounts on the top there. And obviously your trekking poles can lighten your load as well because you can use them. You can get tents that just use the trekking poles so you don't have to bring the poles for your tent. So that's, an, that's, an, that's another way to save weight. When you're on the trail, you can use them to, to move branches out the way. There's just one point if you're if you're hiking in a group just watch you don't you're not waving your poles too far behind you or waving around because you're going to clock somebody else with it. A stopper you put over the end there obviously you're going to use that when they're in storage but that's mainly for hard surfaces you know roads and also for rocks as well if you're on rocks. Now you can get packets of these four six in a packet and the flatter ones as well which are probably better for rocks but I say that's all I use this for I don't I'm not very often walking on hard roads but sometimes I'm walking across hard rocks Give a bit of a, uh, a demo on how, how to use the poles now the pole is going to be at the angle from the ground on the pole is about 70 degrees and you're going to try and keep as much as you can try and keep that 90 degree on your forearm and your shoulder like that and as I say about 70 degrees at the base another thing you don't want to do when you've got a heavy pack on is put them too far in front of you And hiking like that is no good either because when they're too far out in front of you your arm is almost flat so you, you, you're losing that 90 degree. When your arm's flat you're not, you're not transferring the weight on your pack down through your hiking poles. You're only doing that in that 90 degree. That's when you're transferring the weight from your heavy pack down through to your hiking pole which is obviously helping your joints. That's what, that's what you're using the hiking poles for. Now obviously, when you're going uphill, I can't show you around this part of the countryside, <laughs> it's almost flat. But when you go uphill, within reason, you're still going to try and use your strap. And you're going to shorten your pole as you go uphill. So you try and maintain as much as you can that 90 degree angle. But you're not going to put the pole out behind you as far. You can almost bring your pole level with your foot because if it's out behind you it's, it's going farther down the hill you might tend to be leaning backwards so you want that pole closer to your foot or just slightly in front of your foot trying to maintain that that 90 degree and also when you're going downhill if it's a, a moderate gradient you still you lengthen the poles and you're going to still try and maintain that 90 degree but obviously on some downhill stretches you can't, but mostly on downhill runs I have my hand on top of the pole and I extend it out, you know, as least as possible. You don't really want the pole out to its limit, so I put my hand on top of the pole. If it's a steep hill, I very rarely use the strap going downhill like that, I want because if the strap's there, if you do fall, going downhill the pole could come up smash you around the face or trip you up on the other leg anything at all so going downhill I always have my hand on top of the pole then if something happens you can let the pole go if you stumble just let the pole go that's what I do anyway well you, you can see you can see on this pole how long the handle grip is and I just you know obviously you're going to move your hand up and down the handle if you're going uphill, you know, you, you're at the bottom of the handle there. And if you're going down here, as I said, you have your hand on top. 
you're not even using the strap unless as I said before unless it's a gradient it's no as I say it's no good keeping that height and, and reaching right up when you're going up hills it's not it's not helping you at all on really steep hills you can even use your poles to come down sideways and if it's too steep you just put the bloody poles on the back of your thing and, and use your hands to go up but you probably can't see this but th these ones are pretty flexible as I say I'm not an expert just been using these poles for a long time and they work for me I could have some bits slightly wrong as I say big controversy around that okay I can seek a signing out thanks for watching the video and I hope to catch you on the next one goodbye take care